And thank you for uh, everyone joining us today. Again, I'm John Newman, the owner of BCC Distribution, and I'd like to review the agenda. So we'll start off with company introductions. We've got a wonderful video, which is a case study as well as a live demonstration of uh, Tiffin Motors and, the, and an RF scanning and printing solution that both Yash and BCC delivered. We will then go into WM, which is warehouse management and inventory management best practices and overview by Bill Fontaine from Yash. We will then review IM transactions that we specifically delivered to another customer called Allegasco. We will then review pre-built WM and IM transactions that we have um, right out of the box. We will then go into printing and custom applications that are integrate to SAP. We will review a success story, um, or a few actually, in the consumer product industries. And then we will then go into some equipment, um, new updates, some uh, things that have just popped up, and then we will go into a Q&A. And I want everyone to understand if we can hold off on questions to the very end, we appreciate it. And there is a comment section or a chat feature that, that we would like everyone to input their questions um, on the screen. Excellent. So BCC Distribution is a 20-year-old barcoding systems integrator that specializes in inventory and warehouse management systems. YASH Technologies is an SAP certified partner that delivers SAP software, services, as well as support worldwide for SAP customers. This presentation today is also brought to, to all of us by Zebra. Zebra is formerly Motorola and Symbol Technologies and is the leader in barcode scanning and printing and wireless equipment. So the, the first part here, to me the exciting part, is a video that we have put together at Tiffin Motorhomes. Tiffin Motorhomes is in Alabama, and what you'll see is a live production environment utilizing the RF scanning and real-time mobile and tabletop printing systems and solutions that we've delivered. What I'd like everyone to concentrate on, you will see throughout the very short video specific transactions that were built integrating into SAP in real time. We, we've utilized console and ITS mobile in the deliverable. So within the video, please look for the receiving MIGO, Movement Type 101 transactions, the put away bin to bin, LT01 and LT11, the picking, which was LT01 and LT11, and that's a two level create and confirm the TO. We're also doing wave picking from a bin to the cart, then the cart to the buggy. We'll be issuing goods to the SLOF in a WM and IM environment because we have facilities that are IM and or WM. We'll be using MIGO 311 and 201, a bin to bin move, which is an LT01, and again, an LT11, a material and bin inquiries, which is the LS24 and 25, and then the cycle count, which is the LI-11N. And with that stated, let's take a look at the video. Tiffin Motorhomes in Red Bay, Alabama, is a world leader in manufacturing recreational luxury motorhomes. When they began in 1973, they would build one home and then sell it. Over the years, Tiffin has earned a reputation for excellence, and today, the family-owned Alabama business builds 12 or more of these luxurious motorhomes a day with a goal of producing even more. But the manual process of picking and moving 1,500 parts a day was too time-consuming. To reduce their costs, automate the processes, become more efficient, and increase production, Tiffin partnered with BCC Distribution to design and implement a state-of-the-art automated warehouse management, SAP-driven system. BCC Distribution relied on its connection with Zebra, a partnership that has lasted 20 years. Zebra specializes in automated data collection technology, 
and is a world leader in mobility for wireless infrastructure, barcode printing, and RF scanning with a full range of barcoding and RFID products. Headquartered outside Detroit for 20 years, BCC Distribution is a software systems integrator and software developer specializing in delivering automation, RF scanning, and real-time printing solutions that integrate into SAP ERP. BCC Distribution developed TRAN ASAP, a real-time transactional-based inventory software program. TRAN ASAP works with Zebra's RF scanning and printing technology, integrating with SAP's inventory management, warehouse management, and extended warehouse management modules. TRAN ASAP automates the inventory tracking and management process, speeding up transactions, reducing resources, and improving accuracy. By combining TRAN ASAP with Zebra equipment and SAP ERP software, BCC Distribution developed and delivered a turnkey solution to meet Tiffin Motorhome's key objectives to save time and money by increasing accuracy and productivity. But without ever sacrificing the commitment to quality, that has built Tiffin Motorhome's outstanding reputation. BCC Distribution took the time to explore Tiffin Motorhome's entire operation to gain the understanding of how inventory had to move. The system begins with receiving raw materials to the warehouse managed warehouse. Labels are pre-printed by SKUs or printed on demand when items are received and affixed to the materials. The Zebra MC92 and O RF scanner is used to receive the material using the SAP transaction MIGO with the movement type 101. The user enters the PO number and scans the Tiffin SKU barcodes on each item. This step verifies that what was received matches the purchase order, identifies those items that are hot parts that have to go to the plant instead of the warehouse, and directs the put-away location or cross-docking for hot parts. Then the inventory is automatically updated on the SAP. Next, the materials are put away in a bin in the warehouse using a mobile version of the LT01, LT11 transaction. Using the MC92NORF scanner, the items are scanned and the locations are recorded in the SAP. Materials can be moved within work centers and from bin to bin using an RF scanning transaction at any time for accurate tracking. Raw materials are picked for production utilizing the SAP reservations and transfer orders. This step applies wave picking that enables the handlers to pick multiple transfer orders at once to a user cart from the location bins. The user then scans the bin location and material, enters the pick quantity, and adds it to the cart. The next step is to physically move the previously picked materials from the user's cart to a buggy or trailer for transfer from the warehouse to the manufacturing plant, also using the mobilized LT01, LT11 transaction. To record the movement of the items, the user scans the materials from the cart and then the buggy location label. Once the picking is completed and the buggy is ready to be transferred, a traveler report is generated and will follow the buggy. The report shows a unique number and packing list of all the materials for the Whip Bay area. A custom mobile printing transaction allows for labeling specific serialized large dollar items that have manufacturer's warranties on them. The MC67 scanning terminal indicates the item that needs to be tracked through serialization and then generates a 4 inch by 1 inch removable adhesive label with a serial number and model number from the portable battery powered wireless Zebra printer. The label is affixed and will scan the item until it is installed on the vehicle. At the time of installation, the label is removed from the item and then affixed to the traveler report where it will be matched up with the specific vehicle within the SAP software. The buggy is taken to the IM managed production facility where each vehicle is located within the production line. The RF scanning transaction uses movement 311 and 201 for location and cost center tracking. At the specific bay area, the user scans the traveler report which relieves all material from the WM. Once the material is installed on the vehicle and applicable labels are removed and put on the traveler report, the material now has been issued to a specific job or vehicle, thus finishing the process of tracking the materials. Throughout the process, inventory can be tracked by part number or location using the mobilized SAP inquiries transactions, LS24, LS25. The user simply needs to scan or enter a material number or a location, and the RF scanner will show what and where materials are located. 
Finally, the system has been designed utilizing the SAP LI-11N cycle count feature in the WM module. The system allows a user to scan a location and material number, which then validates the count list that is prepared within SAP. BCC Distribution was able to successfully develop and deploy a successful solution that met the unique needs of Tiffin Motorhomes. The company experienced an increase in inventory accuracy, the combination of tasks through the utilization of the mobile devices, and a reduction of the time it took to complete each transaction, which added up to a tremendous ROI for Tiffin. When you're ready to realize greater operational efficiency, make the move to BCC Distribution. We will now move to the SAP best practices from Bill Fontaine of Yash Technologies. Thanks, John. This is Bill Fontaine from, from Yash Technologies, and I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, best practices as they relate to uh, inventory and warehouse management. So on the next slide, uh, what we'll see is an overview and a comparison of inventory management versus warehouse management in SAP. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the basic inventory management processes in SAP. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of this slide, you'll see the horizontal line. So this stuff above the line is, is basic inventory management in SAP. So you have your plants and storage locations, goods receipts and issues, uh, storage location transfers. But below the line, what you see is the warehouse management. And that opens up um, quite a bit more functionality. You get into the warehouse management, storage bin location levels, um, putaways, picking, transfers, just a lot more capabilities with warehouse management. So uh, the next slide, why don't we uncover this a little bit more. Uh, with inventory management in SAP, you know, it's, it's basic, it's very comprehensive, and it can handle your basic material movements. Um, at, you can read through this slide, but, you know, a couple of things to point out is that even with inventory management, not all inventory is created the same, right? So up in the top right-hand corner, you can see different stock statuses. There's uh, block stock, unblock stock, quality, restricted, unrestricted stock types. Um, and we can also bring in, uh, as you see towards the bottom, you know, batch management or lot control of, of inventory. So very comprehensive. The next slide shows warehouse management. And here's the further capabilities of, of that product. So it's more sophisticated functionality. It's designed to coordinate not only material movements, but also the warehouse operators. So it really starts to coordinate what's going on in, in your warehouse. So you see such things as guided putaways, uh, wave picking, right, based on a schedule, a time frame. Uh, we can do more sophisticated stuff like on the right-hand side, you'll see under internal process, cross-docking. So we can do some cross-docking without putaways, right, and, and go directly to a delivery. So uh, it even picks up all the way down to the bottom. You'll see yard management. We can start to manage uh, the shipping doors and, and further capabilities around that. Uh, and the next slide, I've only got w one more slide, and, and then we'll turn it back over to the BCCD uh, folks. I wanted to introduce this concept of, of best practices within SAP. So um, what we're looking at really is best practices as defined by SAP are those things that are pre-configured business processes. They're pre-documented. They're pre-tested and they're available free to any SAP customer out there. So they're a great starting point for your uh, enhancements of, of inventory and warehouse management for your, for your company. Um, it gives you a great starting point, for example, how to set up totes handling. So in the bottom right-hand side, on the bottom right, you'll see this uh, business scenario, business best practice scenario number 927. If you need to consider how to do totes handling, uh, we can give you a pointer to that particular business process. You, you open it up, 
and there's full documentation on how to handle that, down to the transaction level, where you click, what you type. Um, and another example is if you wanted to start moving into uh, and turn on scrap handling, right? How do you manage returns processes from your customers? And then you want to block the stock and put it into different inventory statuses. And now we have to consi consider the, the devaluation of material and so on. Well, that's business practice uh, 131, fully documented, fully tested. So just wanted to introduce these. We can get a lot more information out to you, but you see on the bottom left-hand corner of the slide, help.sap.com slash best practices. SAP has a full library of best practices, and, and I'd be happy to show anyone out there uh, more details on how to get these, how to navigate them, and how to put them into practice in, in your company. So thank you. Any, any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them at the end of, uh, of this presentation. Back to you, John. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the, uh, the slides. Um, this, these slides would have been uh, very helpful for Alan Iverson when he was playing uh, basketball since he didn't like practices. He needed best practices. <laughs> That's right. Let somebody else do it for him. That's right. <laughs> Next, so sorry for that uh, degradation. Uh, next is a solution review of a inventory management RF scanning installation that was done at 10 warehouses of Allegasco, which is Alabama Gas Company, that they cover all of Alabama and all their facilities are all over the state. What we're going to review and what you're going to see today is a portion of the unique blueprint that BCC delivers for every one of our RF scanning and printing solutions that was accomplished this time specific for Allegasco. We start off with flow charting and screen designing each of the SAP mobilized RF transactions. We are not going to review every single one. Um, all of these IM RF scanning transactions are, um, are canned now, but they're all customized as well for the unique environment. And you'll see later in the show um, the list of all of the transactions that we have. And we'd be more than happy to forward anyone that uh, requests a list of all of our IM as well as WM transactions. Um, so let's start off with the actual transactions that we implemented in an IM environment for Allegasco. You'll notice that we've called this the Advanced Parts Crib Inventory System because with a lot of IM customers, the way that they utilize IM is like a parts crib where we have a designated location for each item. Now, we don't need to do that. We have a lot of IM solutions where we actually have multiple locations for a single part number, and we can actually review that um, off-site and give you some of the ideas and things that we've done with NIM. But moving forward with this specific solution, so the transactions that we implemented is goods receipt. We did the MIGO 101, which is a receipt against a purchase order. We then did a goods issue which is an MV1A with a movement type 201. We goods issue to a cost center as well as to an order. Then we need to move the items or the materials. And the transactions we used was the MV1B movement type 351, which is a stock transfer for outbound. We then did an MV1B movement type 303, which is a plant to plant. A MV1B movement type 305, which is a plant-to-plant -plant but inbound, and a MV1B movement type 311, which is an s loc to s loc or storage location to storage location. Once we move the equipment, then we do a material inquiry, or an MMBE. We also included a cycle count, which is an MIO4, and an ME61 purchase rec. Part of the solution was barcode labels. We used bartender label design software. Um, 
with the specific version to allow us to use Commander to integrate the data from SAP to the labels. The labels that we utilize, material location, material labels, as well as locations. And this is where I'm going to I'm going to move fairly quickly here. The the point of the next few slides is really to show how deep we get into our blueprint and our analysis for each transaction. So when we sit down and do the blueprint, and again, this is IM or WM, in this scenario it's inventory management, we actually review uh, exactly how we're going to use the transaction with an SAP. We review what we do, what we validate, what information we want to see on the screen, if there's going to be a label print, and we, ref we go through the whole flow of data as you can see here. The next is now we start putting the screens together. And again, this is all in documented paper form that we do before we do any type of configuration or programming so we're all on the same page. But this is what the actual scanner screen looks like. This is the LM01 menu. We, we utilize the LM01 for all of our transactions so that it can be a menu-driven system. And one of the things I do want to make a note regarding, regarding menu-driven systems is because of the direct real-time SAP system, each user logs in with their SAP user login. So we can customize and create a login based on an employee or based on a task. So if a person is purely a receiver, then they would only actually see on their menu receiving transactions. If you're a shipper, only shipping transactions, and a supervisor, all of the transactions. So now we actually go into showing the whole transaction. So now we're going to receive against a purchase order. And each screen here shows what happens when you enter data in. Where it's yellowed or shaded is asking for a line item. So with a receiving transaction, we have the capabilities of entering the purchase order number. Once we enter the purchase number or scan it in, if it's on the bill of lading in barcode format, it will show us all of the lines on the barcode scanner of everything that was ordered on that purchase order. Most of our customers will have a has the capability of having a piece of paper, their standard um, bill of lading or purchase order document, and they can use it at the same time as the scanner. So now we want to receive a specific item in. We put the line number in, and now it shows us the actual information. And again, these screens are small, so, so we tailor every screen to the client. We have some clients that want to see everything from the purchase order. We have some clients that only want to see part number and quantity. And that's part of what we do here is decipher and show you the specific uh, best practices on what you should do, and then we agree and we put it together. Okay, now we've seen all the line items. Now we're going to go ahead and actually receive. We can see the open quantity, the receive quantity, and then we will enter in the quantity that we are actually receiving. Now we also have the capabilities of printing. You'll notice, you'll see the the screen that says it's posting, so we've received the items, now we've posted it to SAP, and now we have the capabilities of actually printing. And again, this is a, a bartender type application, so any of the transactions that we are utilizing or delivering can have the capabilities of printing labels, printing forms, printing shipping documents, all from the barcode scanner. Because at the end of the day, we want to deliver efficiencies and return on investments. 
one of the major ways to do that is to minimize, to eliminate material handlers walking from the docks, walking from the locations of inventory to and from offices where they manually enter the computer. So that's the reason why we try to do everything from the RF scanner, from receiving, moving, shipping, and printing. Okay, take us to the next application. So the next transaction here is the, uh, the issue to work order. And again, I'm not going to go through um, in specifics. It's the same type of methodology that we will work through how you do things today and how we need to relieve inventory through goods issue to a work order. We also can um, goods issue to other types of orders and cost centers, but today we're just looking at the work order. And again, we would start off at the initial menu. We would take the goods issue tab. We would then take the GI to cost center or to the purchase order, and we would continue going through all of the different screens. And again, this documentation is not our user documentation, it's our des design documentation or our blueprint. And then we actually utilize a lot of these screens specifically for our user documentation. But as you can tell, it specifically goes through um, the plant. It displays the entered plant ID and then the order number, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the transaction that a lot of customers will use to remove the inventory from the system. So we receive and put away. We can do that a one or two step method. We can then move the items through S slope to S slope. And then by issuing, a lot of our companies utilize that as the delivery and that will remove the items from inventory, thus showing us an accurate real time quantity and materials within the IM module. Here we go. This is the S slope to S slope. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and just fly through them real, real quick. And uh, again, this is all part of our standard configurations. We have these transactions as part of our library and the library you see in front of you. So we have approximately 169 TAN standard transactions. IM and WM. I say standard because when we, BCC, developed these transactions, we utilized our own standard practices. So the screens look, look the same way. The validation of the data and descriptions look the same way on the screen. We've done this because there's other items, specifically some of the CAN transactions um, that that exists from SAP don't use standards, so they're different sizes, they use different function keys, they use different methodologies, and that gets confusing specifically to the end user. One of the things that we've learned over the last 20 years is you've got to keep it simple. If the screens have very few words, and we use the keypad very minimally, we will have a successful system. And those are the standards that we use for our transactions list. Okay, you heard me mention a little bit about Bartender. BCC and YASH Technologies, when we deliver our printing systems, we have three go-to deliverables. SAP script, smart forms, and Bartender by Siegel Scientific. Those are all three viable solutions. We do a lot these days with Bartender for one major reason. Uh, it allows us to create barcode labels on a, on a Zebra printer. It also allows us to create any type of barcodes on forms, pick slips, receiving documents, delivery documents, etc. And Bartender has two pieces to it. 
It has what, what we call a WYSIWYG tool on the back end. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And it's a very, very user-friendly tool to allow anyone within about a half hour to learn how to design label formats. You can put uh, different type of pictures. You can put different type of logos. Um, and you can continue changing the look of that label without being a programmer. And that's the WYSIWYG tool. The other piece is called the Commander tool. And this is what allows us to grab data from SAP, drive it through the drivers that come with Bartender, and spit out labels off that Zebra tabletop or portable mobile printer. Some of the applications that we've had a lot of success with, specifically on the printing side, is receiving. We have the ability to print labels and forms from receiving a purchase order. We can utilize a wireless printer, or we can use a tabletop printer. But we prefer to have that printer by that receiving dock, so we are not moving back and forth from the office. And we do this through generating what we call demand labels, not a bulk of pre-printed labels, but from the scanner, I receive an item from a purchase order, I hit one button on the scanner, and it generates that specific material label from that purchase order designed any way you want to put on that box that you're looking at right in front of you. The other Receiving type labels is what we call license plates. A license plate is one barcode that represents many different or same items on a pallet. That can be used, it can be a, an SU, it can be an HU, and again, these are SAP terms for storage unit or handling unit, and they can be used when we are receiving many, many boxes, so many boxes it does not make sense to label each box, so we generate a specific SAP-based serialized label that goes on the pallet that represents everything on that pallet, and we just have to scan one label when we move or put away. Picking handling units is a great example um, of an automation tool that we use with our RF scanning and printing solutions where we actually generate a unique label, like a license plate, at the time of picking. And when we pick the items, we're actually picking and marrying those specific items to that license plate that's connected to that customer order. Serialized, serialization, lot tracking, again, these are label printing integration deliverables that we can do to complement SAP's lot tracking and serialization modules. Now you, met, you heard me mention handling units, storage units, lot traceability. Now these are unique modules or can be unique modules of SAP. And if you don't have those turned on, that's where we use YASH technologies to assist us with configuring and implementing those modules so we can utilize those with RF scanning and RF printing. Shipping and delivery. We are getting an abundance of calls and emails regarding customer compliance. GS1, G10, um, UDI, GHF, GHS, and chemical. There are a tremendous amount of compliance issues that have to be handled through barcode labeling. We have, expert, we have experts at BCC that can assist with the designing and implementation of some of these GS1 and G10 labels utilizing SAP data. And lastly, on the printing side, is location labeling, which many customers don't take as serious as we'd like them to. With our Zebra barcode scanners, we have the capability of reading two-dimensional RFID tags, 
and long-range labels. We have consumer product companies and, and a lot of other companies that have pellets and pellets of materials. They cannot put it in a rack. They put it on the floor in long aisles. Where do you put the labels? You can put it on the floor. Sometimes they get scratched up or peeled off, and that's pretty difficult. We do have the capabilities of doing that. But the popular product are these reflective labels on PVC placards that we hang from the ceiling above the aisles of pellet, pelleted inventory, and we can scan up to 30 to 40 feet from the end of the scanner to these location labels with a zebra scanner that's configured for long range. We had mentioned that we have a specialty in consumer products. The next uh, half dozen line items are specific to clients that VCC and NASH have. And due to the time constraint, we're not going to review all the some of the niche areas. But what I do want to do is give you an idea that we've delivered barcoding, printing, scanning solutions to SAP customers in these scenarios and industries. We'd love to talk to you more. Um, and if you have interest, just get a hold of your rep, and we'd be more than happy to, to share not only what we've done, but the uh, return on investment that these, com these companies have uh, have enjoyed. So in the meat and fish area, we've got to catch weight is one of the, the big re requirements and compliances. So when we receive items, we throw it on a scale, we grab the data, we put it into SAP, we print labels off, and now we have catch weights that we are actually tracking with each box or each pallet. Voice picking is something that um, we have done, we've integrated with SAP. There's new technologies with voice picking that's actually um, an ITS mobile-based system. So now we can do voice picking that's direct. We've done things with a cereal company and a jewelry company, specifically with our high-end um, items. Um, ASN, or advanced shipment notices, being able to automatically generate an ASN via EDI from a barcode scan application at shipping. That's very, very popular in automotive. We've got, we've got customers that have very small vendors that don't have zebra printers or don't have a way of printing labels the way that we need to at receiving. So we've been able to de develop, deliver vendor portal printing solutions where a label is attached to a PO that's put in the electronic mailbox so that when the vendor picks the PO, they're picking the label. They can print it off a, a standard laser printer and tape it to the box. But now they have the barcoded IM or WM material type that's specific to the customer. I mentioned RFID. We do have clients that use RFID not for total tracking of inventory, but for specific unique pieces or parts in their business. And usually it's going to be for items that you cannot put a decent barcode label because it's not going to last long, or very expensive items that we want to be able to track them as they go through rooms or plants or even outside. Hot part recognition, you saw a little bit of it in the video. Hot part recognition is turning out to be a hot solution for BCC, pun intended. Job shop manufacturing, we have, a, we have a couple of customers that manufacture giant machines, million dollar machines, and many times they may be waiting on a dollar part before they can complete it, deliver it, and invoice it. It's the same part they use for other projects and other customers. And so we've developed in the barcode scanning receiving transaction when they receive this part, even if it's for a different job, it will let the user know we are waiting for this part for another project, get a supervisor involved to see if we can move it to this other project or order so we can get it out. And then we have the whole 
the whole philosophy of MES, or Manufacturing Execution Systems, which is the concept of tracking people, resources, materials, items, machines, operations, and integrating that with SAP. We do a lot of labor, we do a lot of scrap, we do a lot of cost, costing with, uh, with MES systems. SAP has a newer product called MII that, that they and we are beginning to start looking at and utilizing it to integrate existing MES type systems or PLC data, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty exciting for what we're doing as well. Um, some of the uh, success stories that we have in the consumer product world, in the coffee, beer, and alcohol scenarios, we have community coffee, we have Royal Cup coffee, we have Summit Beverage, and we have Fun Beverage. Um, these companies are all over the U.S., from Louisiana and Alabama uh, and Georgia, et cetera. The baked goods, dairy, meat, fish, and our favorite, pierogies. Um, those uh, companies, Gold Medal Bakery in Boston, Gallagher's Dairy in uh, Pennsylvania, Franklin Foods, which they make cream cheese, Oli Salamaria, which is a sausage manufacturer out of uh, California, as well as in um, the East Coast. Atico is Mrs. T's pierogies. We have Novus, and we finish up with Clearwater Fisheries in Nova Scotia, where we actually track lobsters and scallops. And lastly, the te technical computer and machine, along with utility, aerospace, and jewelry, we have Allegasco, Source Gas, uh, Tailored Industries, which distributes the HP products, as well as the Apple products, Mag Automation, Thieves, and Rio Grande, which is our jewelry manufacturer. Okay, we've uh, talked quite a bit about software and services. Now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, equipment, Zebra equipment specifically. So Zebra equipment is the best, the world-renowned, the go-to products. Zebra now is the name for wireless access points, RF scanners, standard barcode scanners, as well as all the zebra printers that we all fell in love with many, many years ago. But there, there are some other announcements besides Zebra acquiring Motorola, who had already acquired Simple Technologies. So we have an operating system change that's happening. Over the last 10 years, we've been using Microsoft products, be it CE or Windows Mobile. They've decided to get out of the business. Android is the go-to operating system. Um, slowly but surely, but most of the products that we sell today should have an option for an Android operating system in the next two to three months. And most of the software companies are already providing browsers and Telnet software to reside on Android. So any of our customers that are utilizing an ITS mobile or a Telnet version of our software will not have any issues um, with going to an Android operating system, we will just put the right browser or Telnet license on the scanner and we'll be using the same software that we use today for the most part. Microsoft has abandoned 89% uh, of the APIs going from the WM 6.5. And the reason why I wanted to make note of that is if you do, we do have some customers that are on the show here today that they may have done a unique application um, that is not Telnet or browser-based, and they're using the actual um, software and operate, operating system resident on the scanner. For those companies, there are different APIs, there's different pieces of software and services that we and Zebra can assist with to, to migrate you from the Windows platform to Android. So we wanted to at least let everyone know that. Um, also, some of the new terminals that are coming up. Uh, the tablet is becoming to be much more industrial. Back five years ago, 
um, with Apple and some of the other um, consumer type products, those were not successful in warehousing and manufacturing. Zebra has put a huge effort in coming up with very rugged Android tablets and they're beginning to show up as we speak. And they're, uh, they are wonderful tablets for manufacturing, warehousing, they're Android based and we will be utilizing them for our SAP transactions. We have other, uh, other new products that are on the PDA side of it. So specifically, if we, wanted, if we want to put phone, walkie-talkie or push-to-talk and other type of radios in these scanners, we have the capability of doing so. What we wanted to show you what some of these pictures and these scanners and terminals look like left to right. Um, on the left side is more of a PDA, more of a phone um, type of device, wonderful for route accounting and direct store delivery. The MC55 turns out to be a, a nice lower end product that also can be for route accounting but also can be for supervisors to do inventory inquiry on the shop floor. The 3200 is a smaller screen type of industrial scanner. It's a little less expensive, but because the screen is smaller, um, it's not as friendly with specifically the SAP existing software transactions. And then you have the 95 and the 92NO. The 95 does not have a handle, but has the same size screen as the MC92NO, which is what I call the hammer which is the most industrial um, type RF scanner that exists today with the best and most functions that exist. We can do RFID, we can do long range 2D scanning, long range 1D scanning. We have the capabilities of push to talk, so we can actually pick and if we can't find something, we can actually walk you talk to your supervisor and say, why can't I find the products at the location I'm standing at? And Here's some of the tablets and the vehicle terminals. The, uh, the exciting tablet is the new tablet, which is the ET50. And what's exciting about that is that it's going to, it has the capabilities of actually being installed on a vehicle, then taking it off of a vehicle, like a forklift, and using it in a mobile portable type scenario. And what we, what we do without zebra printers? And I don't think I need to say too much about them, except we've got amazing portable printers that you'll see with the P and the QLNs. We've got the very, very industri industrial um, Z printers and the XI 